there's the background cut out of one side um, well above here and uh, I'll just show you quickly what I was doing there um, so I tend to always use almost always use that uh, half inch wide number five uh, if you've seen some of these other videos you've seen me talk about it you can use a wider tool for some of this but you're not going to save that much time and effort when I have a bunch of wood to take out I use the mallet to begin with so I'm really just catching it sort of between those two v-tool lines and really splitting the wood out the v-tool work is sort of a safety whoops except I just hit that <laughs> um, and breaks the wood free when uh, you come up to it so at this stage of the game it's just really getting wood down there then it'll be some cleanup You see I hold the tool down low, I'm not holding it up on the handle like that, and I've got my hand on the panel, the heel of my left hand on the panel. That's all helping to register the tool to keep it steady. Now I put the mallet down and using hand pressure. going sort of diagonally across the fibers of the board, across what you might call the grain. Switched hands, uh, which I do repeatedly in this work, not with the mallet, but in hand work. It all depends on where I'm trying to get, which, uh, which hand is pushing the tool and which is holding it. There's a case where I am sort of running along the fibers there. And here I want to just kind of slide the tool like that to follow that curve. You can come at it uh, perpendicular to that V2 line too. I'm probably going to use the texture punch on this background so it's condition is not really critical it's all going to be masked by that back background punch but you do want to try to achieve a pretty consistent depth that doesn't mean everywhere the same depth because uh, it's not practical to get to the full depth in a tight spot like right there um, as deep as you can get out here but I don't want a great variety in the depth So remember that I made that little uh, cut there and it's to make a little opening in that leaf like that. We'll see more of how that works when I decorate those leaves. Um, I, can, I beveled the top of that leaf and that's with the bevel up so the tool held very low and just rounding over the 
top of that. So I'm coming up this side, but now I don't go down that side, I come from here. Like that. And carry that rounding all the way down here. I have to flip over, use the bevel down to do that side. Um, I'll redo, I'll do that. I didn't do both of those. So you get to see that again to drive it home. And uh, sometimes it's hard to visualize getting that scroll, the mirror image of its neighbor here. So it isn't, uh, it isn't bad to draw that in. And remember, I did the rest of it with um, the gouge, the number seven, that leaf, and then half of one going up into there. And, uh, so it's over before you know it. And then that background out. chop right behind that leaf and then three of these if you can fit them sometimes you can't fit three then you just do two like that and this line is curving around like that now similar stuff in um, in these leaves and what have I got I've got a little scroll caught in those as well uh, in this piece is pretty tight you hear how I'm just tapping now not really driving hard with that V tool so it comes along following there and just keep pivoting the tool and then stop like that and this can either be just that sort of little hook like that or it, uh, as drawn it has another outline there and that might be pushing it for the scale So you can leave it right like that, which to me is a number six, to the camera is a number nine. But I'll put those extra lines in because I drew them there. Once I carved them on one side, I pretty much always want them on the on the other as well. Um, while I have that here, I forgot this gets the same treatment as the piece it faces, like that.
and then this piece just gets a series of these fanned out like that. And in that case, it's every other one gets that chip out of there. The squirrels running up and down outside the building. You can hear them scratching. There I took all of those leaves out. Uh, by that I mean I made that chip behind each one of those cuts. Usually it's every other one. But it gets you some shadow on there which is always nice to have. That's the whole point. And this top one is usually blank or sometimes might have a little V-tool curve cut in it. Um, and now I'll just finish off this business up here. And that's a couple of strikes with this one. And if you've got a larger one of a similar curve, then you can switch to that. Or you could use a V-tool there. There, the whole fiber didn't come out, the whole chip didn't come out. So I re-striped that first cut to get rid of it. And while we're on that theme, these little things get them too. Nothing is safe. No blank space. Here I switched to a smaller, a narrower gouge. Uh, same curve but just narrower because the other one won't fit. Now you're thinking, well those are blank, so let's put something there. And what I drew is something a little bit different. And what I drew is, is what I've seen in lots of applications. So. A narrow gouge there is sort of a stop, and then this wider number seven like that, sort of connect the dots like that, and then an echo outside it. The, the bit in the middle comes out like that. bit fussy to get at that. And we'll see what happens there afterwards. Um, and similar to down here, you can bevel that as well. And that's beveled up and coming up from the 
center of that panel to follow that frame. Now coming down here. And likewise down there. Here running along the grain is in some cases the trickiest bit. Got to kind of tease it this way and that to connect those dots. And while we're at that, we might as well do this one too. All right, we'll deal with the spandrels and the arch last. Now we'll come down and contend with the urn and the big leaves here and the base of the urn. The first thing I'm going to do is take this half inch wide uh, curved gouge and make a, a cut above that sort of central leaf right there, right about up here, just like that and like that. And going to draw a a thing similar to what we did up here, come down there with a V-tool to connect into those. Um, <laughs> or up from it, I guess. And this will blend right in like that. So it's kind of an arcing loop here. And then we will, we, you will when it's your turn, I will right now, take that out. And because that's so narrow, I'm tipping the gouge up to just weasel out that bit like that. Rather than switch to a narrower tool, just lean this one a bit. Got to get this carving done before the light changes too much. Now there's a, you see I didn't bevel the inside of that piece because this is getting a bevel. And here I'm doing it with the bevel down. just to that curving point right there. Now, when I'm out here, I'm gonna flip it over. But I gotta kinda go back and forth, bevel down, bevel up. Because right there is where the grain sort of converges. So we've gotta kinda come this way, that way, to get that uh, cut cleanly. Uh, heard me groan, I hit the V2 line dug some of it up. Whew. 
And now uh, I'll pop these out. And there I'm just coming from that bottom margin toward those uh, arcs. And at this stage, it's some pretty simple stuff, really. Here, that's easy to see. When I pick up the smaller tool, I'll probably put another smaller one uh, below that. And now th this batch really just runs right along this whole limit, but they kind of fan. See, now the gouge is running along the fibers there. Here it was at an angle to them. And now it'll bend around that way. Like that. These probably didn't turn quick enough. But no matter. The end result is so busy that it's very hard to see any uh, problems. And I typically remove a chip behind every other one. And I don't ever count them on the left and right to see that they're the same. It's mostly just about filling the space. Now, get out of there. We could also bevel around here. Uh, but I didn't in the drawing, but I do have those lines I scribed from the um, laying out that urn. He, this is the tip of a leaf, so it gets treated just like that does. There and there are the left and right so this leaf is sort of bent around that urn. Why don't I just put a little bevel there? So I'll finish those, um, and these just sort of follow around here.
like that. And then I can fit some there and there. Next up, I'll finish the urn and the, its foot, do the spandrels and figure out what's left. For the urn, there's lots of different variations, but for this panel, I'll use the design that I drew in the first set, because you got to start somewhere. And it has an outline. Um, so I'll go back to that um, center point there that helped me lay out these uh, the ends of this urn. Inscribe that piece, and I will draw just above and just below the horizontal center line. And I'll outline all of that with the V tool. just come straight across. While I have the V tool out, I'll do another line here that fades out so it echoes that piece. does that. Now with the number five, I'll bevel across here. And there. Like that. And then with the Where'd it go? The number seven. Now I have a vertical center line struck through there. So these curve away from that center like that, left and right. And you can guess what happens next. Take every other one of those out. Whoops. I have more going one way than the other, I guess. I'm going to hit that middle one. I like the middle one to be knocked out. So here will be one out of step not going to be fatal. And then using that gouge, put a piece down there as well. Um, now a little housekeeping. Um, I want an outline all the way up this piece. Remember, I already did it up in the spandrel area. And I'll do it along the baseline as well. So 
So you could do this early on. Or you can leave it out. And as a result of this piece comes out. And then sort of around these legs of this turn. Legs or feet. And you can bevel that right behind there. Like that. So what have I got left? I have, well, while I'm down here, I'll put those in there. There, instead of switching to a smaller tool, I just tilted this tool up a bit. Oops. And then an echo there. Um, now the spandrels, I guess. And there's two different ones drawn on there. They both start out the same on that diagonal line you strike that leaf like that and I'll do the one that we call the alternate and it has a little scroll in it but if you're going for the the first one the next move would be right here and then up that way and that way. So just several strikes of the same tool to uh, define that spandrel. Uh, I got to look at the picture. Oh yeah. Um, you can do this freehand. You can lay it out with a gouge. Let me show you one of each. So it's much like that one. And then from there, strike that and that. Uh, if you were to strike this with a, a gouge, you might need something like this size. And a couple of strikes, one here, one there, then switch to a smaller one to sort of step around to outline that. In this panel, I don't think it's worth all that effort. I think it's easier to just go ahead and do it like that. And then switch over like that. Here I'm gonna, I have to cut towards myself 
and really turn that tool quickly like that to get those. So you might want to practice that on a piece of scrap before going whole hog on your panel you've just done all that work to. But then it's just a matter of cutting out the very little that's behind there. And you can probably tell what's going to come after. detail for a small space but it adds a lot to it ow sharp those little bits of oak There I am using a gouge to just sever those stray fibers there. It's hard to get back there with that V-tool. And now that small number seven will do these veins up in here. Just squeeze one in there. And I guess I can go back to the regular, the three quarter inch one here. Because these just go this way. You can do these as pairs of them. As I uh, struck that as the end, what did I draw? No, that isn't what I drew. Uh, All right, I'll do the other one the other way, and that will be a, a puzzle for somebody trying to understand this panel someday. So it's you know, converging pairs of them like that. I know some of my. Some of my students who are crazy for symmetry are now just freaking out that I've done one spandrel one way and one the other way. But that's all right. Keep people on their toes. Now you can leave it at that. I like to often uh, bevel that arch as well uh, as I was doing up here earlier. So just go like that. Ah, caught on a nail. And the inside of it, but the inside I got to come from the top this way, and with the bevel down on the tool. Yeah, hard to get it. Right like that. And one last option. Um, you've seen me maybe use this uh, nail set as a punch before, or if you haven't, you're about to now. 
and that'll get punched right up in the top there. And I might do these all along that arch. I will do these all along that arch. Like that. And they can sometimes get as well an echo around them with a gouge like this. Sort of, I'm not going to kind of chip out just like parentheses around those punches. You might have heard me say before, no blank space, right? And here the punch is right down the middle of the urn. And you can do it around here as well. Uh, it, you can do it anywhere. But it goes here. And you remember I said we'll fill that in at some point. And then it's optional. You can pop it anywhere or just leave it at that. Um, the background punch I used this on the um, the lozenge panel that's part of this set as well and um, so you just put it in wherever you can fit it in the background <laughs> 